Good day, my name is Scott Sheds, and today we will have a market dynamics review for June of 2021, which will include a discussion of what Albert Einstein's philosophy was about getting different results by not doing the same things. Our agenda today will include what really are different results? What does that mean? Losses versus gains, according to behavioral finance, recent market and strategy behavior, punctuated events and shifting gears, Merlin's magic portfolio performance, and what's next and should we worry? If you want to do something different to get different results, there is basically two steps. Step one is to escape bear markets. The last two major bear markets in 2001 and 2008 substantially devastated people's portfolios. To achieve a different result, we must escape the bear markets, and to do so, we need storm guard armor, and in this case with bear market strategy number two. In the red is the S&P 500, and in the white is bear market strategy two, taking over when storm guard armor says the market is not safe. The second step for getting different results is to improve bull markets. Sector differences provide opportunity. This 10-year chart illustrates sector trends. The S&P 500 is marked in white. They illustrate the average monthly return of a given sector, or of the S&P 500, over time. If you want to do better than the S&P 500, then of course you have to own the funds that are doing better than the market. This implies one must incorporate some form of sector rotation. Indeed, the trend is your friend. This is a spider sector strategy, and it owns only the trend leader, and dumps out into a bear market strategy when storm guard is triggered. Clearly, the strategy performs much better than the S&P 500. So these are two steps that do not do the same thing as the S&P 500, and they do produce very different results. Keep in mind that the trend is not a crystal ball. The trend is your friend that might bend or end. Let's zoom in to a 10-year chart and look at how some of the sectors behave alongside the S&P and the strategy. Clearly the sector funds shown here are much more volatile than the S&P 500. And in fact, you can run into instances where the terrific performance of a fund, in this case biotechnology, suddenly changes directions and you're holding it. Clearly this is a case where a trend ended while we were holding it. One can also see during this period that the strategy generally performs better than the S&P 500, but there are periods of time when it underperforms the S&P 500. So keep in mind that sector rotation means the roads will inherently be bumpier, but short-term bumps are more tolerable than long-term bumps such as major market crashes. A few decades ago, behavioral finance was developed by Kahneman and Traversky. In simple terms, they discovered that losses scare us much more than gains delight us. On this blackboard chart drawn by Professor Robert Schiller, he is showing that wherever we are with our finances, we fear a certain dollar loss more than we appreciate the same amount of dollars gained. Fear is a much stronger thing than greed. Now if we take a look at how that plays out in these two charts of the very same ETFs, where in red we have ARKK, the ARK Innovation ETF, and in green, the S&P 500, and purple, the NASDAQ. At this point in time, looking from here, we would be terrified about getting a 30% loss in the ARKK ETF, although these guys are not so bad. However, if we go and look at the 18-month period of time, then we see that if you could get this ride up, then this would be possibly tolerable, although it would be very rough riding but that's the evaluation in hindsight. At any point in time when you get in and you're faced with this kind of thing, you're much more upset about this than you would be if you rode this up first and then went through that. Now, one of the interesting things that's going on within the markets is the development of thematic ETFs, of which ARKK is one. As should become obvious when looking at this chart on the left, ARKK, a thematic ETF, appears to have very similar volatility characteristics as the three times leveraged TQQQ ETF representing the NASDAQ 100. 
these new thematic ETFs masquerade as a normal ETF but have characteristics like a leveraged ETF. The purpose of the chart on the right is only to show you that we are in the process of developing a trend confirmation indicator to help some of these wilder thematic ETFs behave better among a set of normal ETFs so they can transfer momentum leadership from one ETF to the other more reliably. As the market evolves, so does AlphaDroid. That's what we do. I'm sometimes asked how long it takes the algorithm to shift gears when the markets shift. Some things cause the markets to shift slowly, but others cause it to shift quite fast. It turns out that most punctuated events are short, random, and should be ignored or endured. For example, the 2011 Fukushima meltdown only took the market down for about two days, and then it abruptly reversed course when everybody figured out that they could still get their auto parts for their Toyotas and, and other vehicles. Sharp drops often snap back and create whipsaw losses. This chart on the right of a spider sector rotation strategy with month-end trading shows how its annualized return varies depending on the trend filter days, meaning the length of the filter averaging that goes into the momentum filter for determining which one of the funds has the best trend. And what we see here is that when you get to shorter and shorter days, the returns reduce more and more. And the reason that happens is if you exit quickly and a rebound occurs, you end up buying back in at a higher price. And this happens more often than not. In this chart, there are three financial ETFs and the S&P 500. They are charted over the last six months. You can see on the far lower left that all of these financial ETFs had a precipitous rise and then a precipitous fall of about 10%. They turned right around and headed back up. There are some concerns about the financial ETFs falling recently. It's hard not to react, but it seems the market reacted to the Federal Reserve indicating that they may raise interest rates earlier than expected, maybe in a year or two. And this news about something that might not happen for a year precipitated a sell-off in the financial ETFs. They are starting to recover already and more than likely will continue to recover as they have at other times after a sharp drop. While one cannot be certain, the odds are in favor of a rebound. In the second chart, we have the financial ETF XLF in red and the technology ETF XLK in green. You can see that in February there was a rotation away from technology and towards the financials. The recent pullback in financials is not a sufficient reason to abandon financials and to buy technology. Doing so would more likely result in a whipsaw loss. Now let's do a performance review of the Merlin's Magic 100 Zero portfolio. First, we note that the relative risk of this portfolio is only 37%, and the near-term bumps right in this zone are not out of the ordinary long term. We see other similar bumps along in here, along down in here, all the way along the way. Nothing out of the ordinary. It has a Sortino ratio of 10.5. At five times the Sortino ratio of the benchmark, the risk-adjusted return is great. Tail risk is illustrated in the lower left chart. The risk of a large quarter-over-quarter -quarter loss remains well below its benchmark. The two-year rolling return remains above the benchmark and is accelerating upwards, right in here. And finally, the three-year, 10-year, and 18-year CAGR are nicely uniform in performance considering the government shutdown of the economy in 2020. Here is the meaning of not doing the same thing. This is how Merlin's magic sausage is made, six-month interval by six-month interval. As you can see, there are quite some differences at times, and at other times, quite a similarity. What are your odds of winning by not doing the same thing? It's actually posted on each strategy and portfolio. In this case, the Merlin's Magic 100 Zero portfolio 
has a quarterly beats of 70%. A portfolio with 70% odds of beating its benchmarks is terrific, but still will underperform the benchmark 30% of the time. But what's next? Should we worry? There are $6 trillion of stimulus on the way. Illustrated in this chart is both the S&P 500 and margin debt used to buy securities. As you can see, high margin debt indicated the top of the market in 2001, and high margin debt again indicated the market top in 2007. And now here we are, racing with great fervor last January already to an all-time high with $6 trillion of stimulus on the way. What happens when the stimulus runs out? When the punch bowl gets taken away, that's generally the trigger to start the downward slide. But AlphaDroid is ready for what's next. AlphaDroid owns trend leaders and employs forward walk progressive tuning, diversified portfolio leaders, and StormGuard armor with integrated bear market strategies and swan guard. Be ready for what's next. Thank you and have a great day.